Hello Facebook, this is Mike Westerfield with Bless with West. I figured I'd just get on here this morning and talk about a few things. If you read the title of this live video, you will see it is, Was Paul the Founder of Christianity? It's something I've wanted to discuss f for a while. Uh, you see, as a former Muslim, it's one of the greatest arguments of Muslims is to uh, try to formulate that actually Paul is the creator of Christianity and that the early apostles, the early followers of Jesus Christ did not believe in the deity of Christ or did they actually believe in the death, burial, and resurrection. And this is actually an argument that is also brought about by many liberals as well as atheists and agnostics trying to show that uh, Paul was actually uh, the creator of Christianity. Uh, you know, I fell for this at one time, although I was a Christian minister years ago and was in Bible college and I left uh, because of these arguments that were brought about by many different people that Paul was the innovator, that Paul used paganism, that Paul created the Christ Jesus, the, that he made the Messiah more than a regular man, that Paul made him divine based upon early pagan traditions and so forth and so forth. And it seems on the outside um, as a really good argument, especially with so many, you're talking about hundreds of books that have been written about uh, Paul being the creator of Christianity, Paul being a liar. So I, said, I figured I would actually get on here and bring some light to this subject because uh, when I started Blessed with West, I figured I would um, do some talking and share some things with people. But um, reality is, I would like to tell everyone, and especially the Muslims out there, Paul is not the founder of Christianity. I'm going to say it again, and I'm going to explain why and try to validate this the best we can. You see? The death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ was something that is, it is the hub of Christianity. Without it, Christianity does not exist. There is no such thing as an early Christianity early on after Jesus disappeared or the disciples stole his body, if that's what you believe, and they just created this faith, you know, that, um, and then Paul came in and just created this faith that Jesus uh, died, was buried, and resurrected just to kind of bring status to himself at the same time ignoring what the apostles before him believed. Now we know that in the New Testament there are some disagreements with Paul and Peter. Uh, there is some things, there is some tension in the beginning or in the ministry of Paul but it is straightened out and this primarily, this, this tension comes from Paul being the messenger to the Gentiles. You see Early Christianity, you know, did not have the Trinity figured out. But all of the New Testament, with much of the Old Testament including, gives room for the belief of the Trinity. Just as Muslims, for those, some of you may not, uh, under, you know, know anything about Islam, but Muslims believe what is called Tawhid. And Tawhid is like monotheism in its essence, the strictest belief in the oneness of God. Well, Tawhid is not mentioned in the Quran. The word Trinity is not mentioned in the Bible, but that does not mean that Trinity is not a valid understanding of the Godhead or um, of God in his essence. And we could talk about that at another time. But the reality is, if we really do look about, you know, look at everything, the early followers of Jesus Christ believed he was divine. The early followers of Jesus Christ believed in the death, burial, and resurrection. And if we really read with an open mind, the New Testament and also some extra biblical references as well, we can actually come to the belief that Paul was not the founder or creator of early Christianity. In reality, Paul was cre uh, carrying on a tradition that came before him. In the New Testament, when Paul is talking about the Lord's Supper in the Konye Greek, which is the Greek of the New Testament, Paul is actually talking about a tradition that was passed on before him. So there's some questions I would like to ask people. If you really believe that Paul was the founder and creator of Christianity, one of the main questions is, what is the benefit? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to explain. Because, well, you know, we have, and, um, if we, um, and excuse me if I'm kind of um, driving at the same time while I'm talking right now, but, uh, you know, we have actually, in uh, Philippians 3, 5, we have an attestation. We have something as a proclamation of Paul defending his apostleship because a lot of people did kind of question Paul, like, Paul, you came along later, 
you were a persecutor of Christianity as you know you were Saul you became Paul you came along later and then all of a sudden now you're 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 going to come in here and you're going to speak power the power of the death burial, resurrection of you know Al Mashiach or the Messiah and they were kind of scared they were hesitant to follow him because of his past you see Paul you know uh, if we if we break this thing down in Philippians, Philippians 3 5 Paul was a Hebrew of Hebrew of the tribe of Benjamin you know he was a Pharisee Paul later on and you know in Acts we hear that Paul was taught under Gamaliel Gamaliel was uh, an ancient rabbi the first century who was an elder he was one of the greatest rabbis he was part of the Sanhedrin that is of the Jewish high court so that's kind of like me saying this right now hi you know listen everyone I am a Christian you may not believe that I'm a Christian because I used to be a Muslim but listen I want to tell you I am a Christian and I am truthful and I'm gonna to explain to you why I'm truthful my name is Mike Westerfield I am the son of Michael Barry Westerfield I actually used to be a Christian minister I was in the Church of Christ I went to Bible college and dropped out you can research these things and talk to people about me to prove who I am also let me tell you about myself I have an associate's degree in criminal justice I have a bachelor's degree in corrections administration and management I have a master's of public administration government policy I have a master's in Christian studies pastoral ministry blah 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 you see I'm giving an attestation I'm telling you who my cluster field is I'm telling you why I feel that God has put on my heart to start blessed with West so I could talk about these things well Paul was doing the same thing we have to really look in, um, in, in, in ancient times and in the first century there weren't narratives there weren't uh, you know like there are now there weren't you know biographies and stuff like that so when you have Paul you know attesting to his credibility and then he throws in that I was taught under Gamaliel. You've done this. This thing has changed. This has went to a whole nother level. Because what Paul is telling you is, I have credibility. Yes, I was a persecutor of the saints. Yes, I was killing Christians. Yes, I did not believe that Jesus was the Messiah. But now I have changed. I've had a revelation. Jesus has spoken to me. He has appeared to me in a revelation on the road to Damascus. Jesus has come in and he has moved my heart to pull me away from being a murderer, to showing you the love and the truth and the power of God that is in the resurrection. This is what Paul is telling everyone. Even the Jerusalem Council, whenever um, you know um, Peter acted as a voice of reason for the Apostle Paul in the Jerusalem Council, and if you re and if you really read and we read in Acts. Peter was saying, you know, who are we that we should deny that the Gentiles come in to the worship of Jehovah? Who are we? Who are we as Jews that should deny that Gentiles come in? Why did Peter say this? Because Peter knew Paul. Because Paul was a messenger to the Gentiles. Paul was given another message. This is history. They did not have a problem with Paul because Paul was the creator of the deity of Jesus Christ. They did not have a problem with Paul because Paul created the death and resurrection. I'm sorry, everyone. If you believe Paul is the founder of Christianity, you've been fooled. You really, yeah, you are, I mean, it's, it's you, you know, you're believing a conjecture. There is no proof. You are postulating a theory. There is no evidence for you to say that Paul created Christianity. The reality is, Paul was following an earlier tradition, and Paul was given the message to preach to the Gentiles. That was the biggest difference of the early disciples or the apostles when it comes to Paul. He actually had a different message. Is why you and I, as Gentiles or anyone else on who may be listening, have the privilege and the blessing to read the scriptures and believe in the death, burial, resurrection because Paul, Peter, and John, John, and James, James being the leader of the early Jerusalem church, were not preaching Jesus, you know, Yeshua was the Messiah. He was the one foretold. He did not die. Yeshua did not resurrect. Yeshua or Yeshua, however you want to call him. They were not saying these things. This is not fact. This is not validated in early in, in, in early church history, this is not validated um, outside of the Bible. What's really discussed is um, if we read, um, you know, the writings of Josephus, that Jesus Christ, 
you know, that his early followers believed that he was resurrected, that he did miracles, that some of his early followers were around to that day. He wrote the Antiquities of the Jews, early Jewish historian. We have writers outside of the New Testament that talked about that Jesus was killed under Pontius Pilate. Sorry, Muslims. Yes, Jesus was killed. I understand what you're saying. I, I, I see where you're coming from. The Quran says he was not killed nor crucified. Only a likeness of that was shown to him. Indeed, he did not die. But reality is, not only does the Bible validate it, uh, but extra historical, non-biblical uh, references discuss and show that the early that the early testimony of everyone that Jesus was that he died. So Paul did not create the death of Jesus the burial and the resurrection. Paul tells people, tells the early followers, especially those questioning him, if you want to question me about my credentials and everything, I'm going to throw them at you. I would expect any educated, not educated, whatever your trade is, throw out your credentials. If someone doesn't believe that you are who you are, show who you are. Show everyone who you are. If you're proud of what you do, show it. That's what Paul was doing. But all of this nonsense that the apostle Paul is the founder of Christianity, man, that's watered down. That's getting old. People, if you really believe that, what you're doing is you are believing in some literature that came out in the 1900s uh, that was the result of higher criticism when a lot of German scholars got together and they started to pick apart the Bible to try to show everyone that the Bible is indeed not the Word of God, that it is prone to error, and they formulated all these theories, and they tried to say um, you know, that the authors of the epistles, even Paul's and the Gospels, were not who they say they were, and they tried to throw all this garbage of people that tries to strip them away from faith and hope because they were a bunch of atheists and agnostics and they could not stand the fact that people believe in the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. This is what's happening right here. So whenever we talk about, you know, Paul is uh, is is the founder of Christianity, um, it's it's really um, it's 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 futile. Yes, Paul had disagreements with Peter. Yes. Peter went back to his old ways at one time and didn't want to let Gentiles, he didn't want to sit with Gentiles. The biggest, this, you know, the biggest, the controversy of Paul was how are we going to bring Gentiles into the fold of Jehovah, our great God? How are they going to come in? Are they going to need to be circumcised? Do they have to adhere to the law of Moses? What are we going to do? It was not the fact that Paul created this thing. It wasn't the fact that the early followers of Jesus did not want Gentiles in. It wasn't anything to do with that. The reality is that they were trying to figure this thing out under guidance of the Holy Spirit, and Paul was giving the message to the Gentiles. We need to stop talking about Paul as the creator of Christianity, that Paul made up the religion, that Paul created the deity of Christ. This is not reality. This is not, if anything, it was the deity of Christ. It was Jesus being a divine figure. That was what was messing up a lot of people early on, especially Romans and Greeks, because a lot of their gods and goddesses were just, were, were myths. But Jesus existed in real time. We can actually um, prove with reasonable evidence that Jesus died, was buried, and was resurrected. A lot of the early people believed that Jesus, you know, a lot of the early Jews tried to bring in the theory that his disciples stole the body. And that, that just brings up another topic of discussion, if I can, uh, real quick. If Jesus is not the Son of God and did not die on the cross and resurrect, then Christians, our faith is in vain. This is what Paul says. Paul, you know, if Jesus did not resurrect, we're believing a lie. What happened to the body? What happened to Jesus, and why did thousands upon thousands of early followers of Jesus Christ die? Why did they die the death of a martyr, fed to the lions by the early Romans, crucified, burned at the stake, burned at the cross? All of the apostles, according to church history, with the exception of John, who was boiled I mean, he was, um, he was boiled in oil, but lived. He died naturally on the Isle of Patmos. Thank God, because we have the book of Revelation, the Gospel of John, and the Epistles of John. Those were some of the last ones to be written for us. But all the other apostles died horrible deaths. People do not die for a lie. You may die for something you believe in, but you're not going to die for a story that has been made up. 
why would Paul make up this story and how come we don't find the disagreements with Paul early on that are saying, Paul, wait a minute, you know Jesus didn't die. I mean, you know that Jesus, yeah, that Jesus did not die. You know that he ascended, that you're making up this crucifixion. You're creating something that didn't happen. We were there, Paul. Paul, we were there. There were eyewitnesses around at that time to refute Paul. <clears throat> The only Paul, the problem that Paul faces is defending his apostleship and also bringing Gentiles into the worship of the Jews. Paul does not face any problems talking about, you know, Jesus being God in human flesh, that him being divine. Paul's one of the earliest ones that starts talking about Jesus pre-existed with the Father. Paul's, you know, but the word Trinity was not used. However, it, it's it's all in the New Testament. This is why, you know, the early Christians, it is the, the word Trinity is not there, but the Trinity is all in the New Testament. The belief in the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit being three separate centers of, uh, of consciousness at the same time being one in divine essence. It's a beautiful thing that God manifested himself in the flesh and came to humanity. If anybody has the Holy Spirit and has accepted this and accepted Christ, they will know what I'm talking about. Unless you have the Holy Spirit, you're going to think I'm talking about a bunch of nonsense. You're going to continue to read a lot of your books and everything else to prove that Paul was, a, was in fact a false prophet and a liar. Reality is, if we're going to be historians, if we're going to believe credible evidence, Paul was not the founder of Christianity. Paul was the messenger to the Gentiles and the early church, which were Jews, were having a difficult time understanding this until they received guidance from the Holy Spirit. Peter even says, man, some of Paul's writings are a little hard to understand. He is attesting to Paul. He is giving credibility to Paul. Peter is validating Paul. Peter is letting people know that some of Paul's writings are hard to understand. Paul was a philosopher. Paul probably knew Konye. We know Paul knew Konye Greek. He probably, we know he could read from the, uh, we, he could read Hebrew. How do I know that? Because he was a Pharisee. He was also from the tribe of Benjamin, a Pharisee. And to be a rabbi at that time, primarily had to memorize the first five books of the Bible. In Hebrew, Paul spoke Aramaic in the house, just like Jesus did. Paul probably knew Latin as well. Paul was what would have been at that time like a Socrates, Aristotle, or Plato of his time, but also a Jew. So he mastered many different philosophies. Paul at times is a little deep and hard to understand, but with God into the Holy Spirit, we know that he's an apostle. There's just no explanation for it. So as people go around and continue to talk about Paul is the creator of Christianity, that he founded Christianity, then you have a bigger problem. You need to go ahead and start telling everyone now that what did the early apostles believe about the death, burial, resurrection, and why did it, they refute Paul on that doctrine he created? That's the question you need to ask yourself. And then why did all the early followers of Christ, including Paul and thousands of others, die for a belief in the death, burial, and resurrection? They didn't die for a belief that Jesus did not die on the cross but ascended to heaven like the Quran says. They did not die for a belief that Jesus was on the cross but went into a coma. And then when he came to, they thought he resurrected and then they created this story when he ascended. Uh, and then the whole thing that Jesus didn't even exist. I'm not even, even going to discuss that because it's just a waste of my time. Wanted to come on, um, you know, Blessed with Wes, talk about a few things. So when everybody, because I hear this at least once every few weeks, you know, Paul is the creator of Christianity. You're believing in, you know, Pauline, you know, Paulinism, you know, you're a Paulist. Uh, you know, the early followers of Jesus did not, you know, believe in the death by resurrection. That's hogwash garbage. That's not true. One of the reasons why... I left Islam because I believed in that garbage. I mean, one of the reasons why I left Christianity because I bought into that garbage. And one of the reasons why I left Islam because through historical study, I've come to believe, you know what? I was misled. I was believing, I was not believing the truth. I had a hard time wanting to believe that God manifested himself in the flesh and came down here and died for you and I. That's what I had a hard time believing. But it's the only thing that makes sense on this earth. And it's the only thing that solves the problem of our evil wickedness in the heart. So uh, this has been my Mike Westerfield, and I hope you have been blessed with West.